Welcome back everybody to part 9 of our Unity Beginners tutorial series. Thank you very much for joining us. And before we get into this video, I just want to remind you that in the description below, there are links where you can download the PDFs of the code used in these videos for you to check at home for your convenience. To recap from last video, we've now implemented a simple live system and head up display information as well. So when we hit spikes, we lose lives. And when we hit zero, it brings up our game over. Now at the minute, when we press replay, nothing happens. We're gonna change all that in today's video by expanding on our live system and also introducing a very simple respawn mechanic as well, as well as change how our game over screen is going to work. So in order to do that, we're gonna to have to go back to our main menu. Save your scene. And let's open up our main menu scene. Once your main menu scene has loaded, I would like for you to go to scripts, open up your main menu script, and here is where we're going to set our default lives value using what's known as player prefs, which we are then going to call upon in our lives manager here. So we're not going to end up using this value. We're going to reference it from our main menu instead using player preferences. Now player prefs, short for player preferences, is a built-in caching system in Unity which is used for storing information between game sessions and scenes. This information could be things such as player attributes and statistics, high scores, options and settings, or even game saves. Such information can be stored quite easily using any of the following three formats. Floats, integers and strings. Three formats we're already familiar with as we've used them in this project already. And it's quite straightforward really. So to begin with, let's give ourselves a value that will be our default lives. So at the top, let's type public int and let's say default lives. There we go. That's the value we're gonna set as our player preference. Then I would like for us to open up a start function. So just underneath, type in void start because we want to set our current lives as our default lives the moment we enter our main menu screen so it's done automatically. And as we're using player preferences, that's exactly what we're going to write. Type in player prefs dot set int. We want to set that value. As you can see, we have our three methods, set float, set int, and set string. So go ahead with set int. Now we're gonna to wanna to give this value a reference, a name, so we know where to store it. Open up some brackets and quotations, and we're gonna call this one current lives. There we go. So when we enter our main menu, we're gonna set our current lives, and our current lives is going to be equal to our default lives value that we're going to set in the main menu scene. That's why we've made it public. There we go. Give that a save now. That's all we need to do here. So just to recap, when we enter the main menu, our current lives is going to be set as the value of our default lives. Then we have to go back to our lives manager. Now, as we have just set our current lives as our default lives in the main menu under player preferences, we're no longer gonna rely on our default lives value here because that's already been done in the main menu the moment we enter the game. So we can go ahead and just cancel that out or delete it if you like. And we can delete default lives here. And we're simply gonna say that our lives counter is gonna be equal to easy, the current lives value in our player preferences. So type in player prefs dot get int. We have set that value, we've set that integer in the main menu. Now we're going to get that integer, we're gonna get that value. And what did we call that value? Well, we called it current lives. There we go. It's as simple as that. 
So when we jump into our first level, our lives counter has been set equal to current lives, which is determined by our default lives at the start, which we can change as we test our project as we go on. That's why we made it public. That's not all though, as we're going to want to override our current lives value every time we lose a life or gain a life. So we're going to want to set a new int every time. So if we go to our take life and add life function, here we'll just add a very similar line of code and we're going to say player prefs dot set int because we're going to set a new value now. And what is the sum of that value? Well, it's going to be our current lives. And what is current lives going to be? Well, it's going to be equal to our lives counter. So we can just simply type in lives counter. There we go. So it's going to constantly set a new value for our current lives based on our lives counter. So when we lose a life, it'll update it. When we gain a life, it'll update it. Same again in add life. We are just going to copy this line of code and paste it underneath. There we are. Pretty straightforward. Go ahead and save that now. Let's go back into our project, wait for it all to compile. And once it has, go to main menu in our hierarchy. And you should see now we have the updated script. There's our default lives. So set that value to whatever you like. I'm going to set it to five. This will be our default lives, which will save as our current lives value in player preferences. Then hit play. And when we play the game now, our lives value, boom, is set as five from our player preference current lives. So we can run around, enjoy, play the game. Let's lose some lives and oof, boom, there we go. So now we've got the game over screen set up. That works all A-OK. -okay. But we want to respawn whenever we lose a life. At the minute, we can just jump up and down on the spikes like a crazy Waluigi man. So let's go ahead and change that, shall we? We really don't have to do much here as we have already written that code in our game manager script. So I'd like us to go back into our script, go to game manager, and if you have a look at the function here, reset, we have victory screen set active false, game over screen set active false, the player game objects set active true, more importantly, the player transform.position equals player start. This is the feature that we want to use when we respawn. So rather than write a new function out, just for that line of code, we will use our reset function. These won't come into effect as our player is active and our victory and game over screens are false. So to do that, let's go to our player controller because before we had it that when we hit a spike, the game over screen appeared. Just underneath it, we're going to make a reference to the game manager, the GM dot reset. And there we go. So when we hit a spike, we will immediately appear at the start position of the level. Save that, hop back in, jump back into our game, jump in. Now let's hit the spikes and we should see we will reappear at the start of our level. That'll do for now. For simplicity's sake, you can expand upon this in many ways, which we may do in a later video. But for now, this does the job. Last thing we want to change though, is how our game over screen works. Because at the moment, it's not taking us back to anywhere. It's not resetting our lives value at the top, nor is it starting the game over again. Now, we're paying homage here to the likes of Super Mario Brothers and the days of old from the NES days, where if you got game over, you'd be sent back to the main menu to try again. That's exactly what we're gonna do here. So we're going to remove this replay button entirely and we're going to give a timer. So when the game over screen appears, it'll appear for a few seconds before we get sent back to the main menu. Go back into our project, save it as we've done a fair bit and let's load up our level one scene. And once we're back at our level, let's go to our game over screen, set it active so we can see it. 
open it up and let's just deactivate our replay and quit buttons. When we go back to the main menu, there you'll have a chance to quit the game should you wish. Let's deactivate game over screen, close it down, crack a save. Let's go back into our script, into our game manager script. In the game manager script, at our game over function, we're going to want to add two things that will allow us to do one, the game over screen to appear and wait a few seconds before two, returning us back to the main menu. As we want to return back to the main menu, which is a scene, we're going to want to go at the top and add scene management. So at the top here, using unity engine.scene management, exactly like we did in our main menu script. And while we're up here, let's add a public string. The string, of course, being the name of the scene we want to load. We can simply call that main menu. There we are. All right, let's go back down. Go back down to our game over function. And let's address how we're gonna make the game over function last for a few seconds. We're gonna do this using what's known as a coroutine. Now a coroutine is a function that we can delay the execution of through providing specific requirements for conditions to be met in order for that code to run. For example, the functions we've been using up to now are executed and continuously run for the frame or frames in which they are called, such as for when we move, when a button is pressed and is held down, for every frame it's held down, our movement function is executed. So coroutines give us a bit more control over when we want them to run exactly. And we do this through what are called yield statements. Now to write a coroutine function is not like how we write the functions we have here, where we put public void and then the name of our function. We use what's known as an enumerator. So underneath our game over function, let's type with a capital IE enumerator, put a space and let's name our coroutine like every function needs. And we'll call this one game reset. Don't forget your brackets at the end there. Go underneath, open up some curly brackets. And what do we need to put inside here? Well, we start with our yield statement. And to write a yield statement, we start with yield return, because it needs to return a function, a value, new, and we want to use time. So we can say new wait four seconds. How many seconds? Well, that's determined by the float we put in these brackets here. Let's say for now, 3F. So after three seconds, what's gonna happen? What we put in this line. And after three seconds, we wanna be returned to the main menu. So we type scene manager dot load scene. And of course, main menu is the scene we want to return to. So to recap, we have written our coroutine. After three seconds, it will work down this list. So after three seconds, it will then go to our scene manager.load scene. That's what an enumerator does. It moves on to the next object within a function upon a condition being met before it returns false ultimately at the end. This won't work, however, as we need to start our coroutine. I'm going to start this coroutine in our game over function. So if we just create a little space and we simply write start coroutine and then in the brackets, type in the name of our coroutine. So go ahead, open up some quotations and let's name it as we have done below. Game reset, end of semicolon. So now when the game over takes place, the game over screen appears and it will then start our coroutine alongside that. After three seconds has passed, Boom, we'll be sent back to the main menu. Save all that now. Let's go back into our project. And once it's compiled, let's go to our game manager at the top where it says main menu, of course. Let's type in the name of our main menu scene. Save the scene. Now let's go back to our main menu because our lives won't be reset. But when we do, our current lives will be reset back to the default value. 
Now we can play our game from the very start. We'll be able to run around. We can see that our lives have been set to the default value. We're going to die and respawn. Everything's working well so far. And then when we hit our final life, our game over screen should appear. And it will appear so for three seconds before we get swiftly moved back to the main menu. So there's a game over, three seconds pass, boom, back to the main menu. And there we go, everything working just as we want it to. That's all for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're following along well at home. Do not forget, in the description below, there are links where you can download PDFs of the code for you to check and cross-reference in your own time. Also, if these videos have been helpful to you in any way at all, and you see the value in what we're doing, please consider subscribing to the channel and giving us a follow on Instagram and Twitter, where you can hit us up with any questions you may have. Until then, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.